the Megalogai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. Our training in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself upward unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who are demanded to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. Without being in the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. We can never be those our Lord of our God has designed for us in eternity past, the kinekatesis of the church age, to show forth through this completed canon of scripture, through the process of sufferings on this earth, as First Peter teaches to us the word Christian, used three times in the Bible. For example, in the New Testament, they have to be shown forth as disciples in Acts chapter 11. And King Agrippa was being persuaded that he was almost to become a Christian. And then, wherewith we read in 1 Peter 4.16, if anyone suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify the Lord of our God in this matter. And this suffering, where the Christians have been called and designed on this earth, which they go through, demands simple obedience. Simple obedience. So that when the day of the Lord of our God comes, in which Lord of our God in his own way has designed our trials, should be found to praise and honor and glory at the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The suffering for blessings, what we go through in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, breath by breath, is what we need to appear for a praise, a honor and a glory before our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is a process that our Lord of our God is carrying on now. It may be even putting into the furnace to bring out the preciousness of the faith. That's what we have read in Daniel 3. Hell on earth. But the sons of God, to whom the Spirit has been given, where the word of the Lord of our God says through John 1.12, who have been indwelt by the Trinity, they come out in the bold step of faith, depending upon the Lord of our God, breath by breath, shining. And the way how the world should learn from them. The way how the doctrine should be taught and applied to the present people who are suffering on this earth in the same terms as a Christian. And if ever you want to be a Christian, you should be the disciple number one. And every trial that you go through, that's what Christianity is all about. Bible doctrine has been given for those leaky brains who haven't claimed day by day the promises of the Lord of our God, moment by moment in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, depending upon the Lord of our God to realize that no weapon that is formed against thee will ever prosper. Rather, believing and listening to lies. The lies where they have much 
prejudiced mind to teach about satan and to inculcate fear in their thinking but in the church age we have been demanded to trample satan under our feet even the last enemy death has been erased out if ever we fail says first corinthians lust we shall be not like them but rather use the promises of the lord of a god and enter into his rest of this great peaceful mind if you are in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit breath by breath you will work divine good outside but inward you will have joy peace every trial every suffering every adversity every pressure that could come in your life they can never truly make your dissolution they can never truly make you to end up in the trials of this life and say lord is not with me in this trials in the sufferings you are enjoying the grace that grace which you can enjoy only in this flesh while you are on this earth when you go back home you cannot enjoy this super grace believing aspect of grown up in the word of the lord of a god to teach you one simple example in jeremiah chapter 32 when the lord of a god says in verse number 8 and 9 to purchase the field hanael the uncle of jeremiah comes and asks him to purchase that field from him and very specifically we find the word in the hebrew says please please take it for the work of the lord of a god that's the status quo and the grace upon super grace believer that's the status quo what we heard yesterday in the thumbs pertaining to elijah the food that was been provided for him 3 years and when the widow had a discourse with elijah not to believe the promise of the lord of a god we have found the way she tells you have come to remember me of my sins the things why we are telling these things dear brethren the faith principle what we learn the faith rational what we learn the faith rest technique which has been given for us to seal up those leaky brains what pleasure you think on this earth could be more profitable for you than to have the pleasure of the word of the lord of our god day by day being taken in the mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit breath by breath there can never be any great pleasure neither there can be any other great job than to go and prove your worth of calling by daily taking the bible doctrine which has been given for us today what our lord of god has prepared and kept are you anxious enough are you alert shakat alert if a man of your own blood is been in the icu that is what intensive coronary care unit and you stay there till the doctor could call or the nurse could call and what for you stay there because if there is any urgency of the medicine that should be bought you should be available with there therefore whenever they call you on the over the phone when you are waiting in your long you run there to say is it my phone or is it for the other patient or the number bad patient why you want to be alert that's the shakat That's what Proverbs 8:34 teaches to us to be alert. Morning by morning, what they have been teaching in the pulpits. Morning by morning, what is the merinma care for the church where Apostle Paul was been worried a lot. But today's pastor teaches are persecuting the church. They have made it a den of thieves. They don't worry what to teach every day. Neither they are people who are not interested to come and learn this great word of the Lord of God every day. they are much happy to learn lies rather than truth they are much happy to have questions like the way how the widow raised against elijah rather than just humbly believing it that's why dear brethren the trials and the sufferings on this earth as a christian that you suffer and the things how you suffer in the midst of such apostasy you tears of your eyes have been counted in the bottle 
Those standards that should be in Bible doctrine have been replaced by those men who thought or who think yet. Rather than exegeomai, we could go back and teach in our share what's of teachings. But the word of the Lord of our God demands John 1.18 exegeomai, replacing it with what? The share of their own thinking, the share of their own experience. Epitomai ministries have become great than the Aglanco ministries. We should convince them, we should have a great reproof for their correction and change their lives. If they don't change or not, it is left to them, but our duty should be done with great care. To seal up these leaky brains and teach them the importance of the fear of the Lord our God. Therefore, these trials which we go through in our life day to day, being examined for those believers in Christ like the Meshach, Shadrach and Abagnado. In fact, indeed, the greatly beloved one Daniel was also been taken into consideration in the den of lion to look. And he says, my innocence was being proved. And we have read that word which is not Tami'im but the word which finds to be proving honesty and the church age believer they have been called not just to be perfect like the Tami'im nature of Satan before its fall but since we share the righteousness and the justice and the eternal destiny of the Lord of our God being predestined and we even have the sperm of Christ says 1 John 3 9 we need to walk like him says 1 John 2 6 there is no excuse no longer imitating the way how Paul says imitate me no longer like John the Apostle, no longer like John the Baptist, but they have been given as an example for us. At least we could produce in us that character. But every believer has been given such a great power of indwelling in him by the indwelling Trinity. It is not any longer the angels which could come and teach to you, but the great Lord God, the Father in heaven, designed for us this paraclete guide, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who is going to teach us to go through those sufferings, who is going to enlighten us to have our faith to be found for the praise and honor and the glory of the Lord our God in His judgment seat. That's why constantly demanding for us to sanctify ourselves. Be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. Seeking and searching those bona fide, gifted male spiritual pastor teachers according to the grace of the Lord of our God, wherewith they have been given this bona fide gift who lay down their souls to the church. Not adding anything to the Bible, neither deleting anything from the Bible by not diminishing the word, but preaching the word. They are answerable to Yahweh El Elyon Elohim who has ordained them to come the way have Daniel chapter 9 teaches. The Hebrew word man, Gabriel, not referring to angel, the man, Ish. And there we find the perfect maleness in opposite to the femaleness, the quality of a male. The same thing what we read in Ezekiel 34 when he says, The shepherds of my flock are men. The last verse of the chapter. Why he compares them to be the Ish. They have something of a great quality in them. And the quality what we look dear brethren. Thus said the Lord. Thus said the Lord. Whether they are here or so phobias. What the word of the Lord our God demands. They are the one wherewith he teaches them from the way to be men to become like man Gabriel we find the word men for Ezekiel 34 30 that's the word Adama from the where he has taken the origin of us from dust we are we shall return to the dust but while we are still in this old sin nature, the bona fide gift of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, 
given at the moment of salvation, demanding our lives for a faithful preparation. A temporary sacrifice of your life when your friends have achieved the peak of the status. But at the prime Gabor strength of your life, you give your life to the Lord of a God so that he can train you up and use you for something to become like a man, Gabriel, which has been mentioned in Daniel chapter 9. He came to teach you with understanding. He came to teach you in the knowledge of the word of the Lord of a God. And therefore, he says in Daniel chapter 9, very specifically, learn the understanding what I am teaching to you, what they have been designed upon thy people, the 70 weeks. These things, dear brethren, from the Hebrew code 120 men of Ezekiel 34:30, being changed to the Hebrew code of 367 of man referring to Gabriel demands that special effect of the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher to say them to understand, thus said the Lord and thus said the Lord. That's the final verdict. And for that cause they have been demanded according to the grace of the Lord our God to be his teaching, gift in us. Maybe that's what against Elijah, the way how that widow did not believe his word. And Lord our God to, act, to sanctify that great words of the prophets. That's what even we read in Revelation 11 as well. The prophets and the holy ones of you. And today it has become a gimmick for many people who enter into the pulpits, who have a lot more to teach, who have a lot more to train, who have a lot more to tell for you. Come to a theological seminary, will qualify you for such and such standards. Come for this, come for that. And the bona fide gift for you is nothing, but you have something far greater to fulfill. The Joel passage used in Acts 2 verses 18 and 19. And telling even the slaves will the slaves of men will be prophesying, the slaves of women will be prophesying. And they say this has been poured down upon our flesh today. And they yet do not realize and understand that's the passage to be fulfilled in the millennium. Referring to them to their consciousness to understand whether they have some doctrine in their mind in the frontal lobe or not. Lord God, the Holy Spirit helps Peter to quote that reference. The same thing, what even the so-called chief priests, the scribes, and the common people in Matthew chapter 2 verse 5, where they came when they were been inquired by King Herod. They said, it has been written such and such, and they quote about from the Bethlehem, and they say such and such things. But privately, secretly, that's what we should understand. The word acribos, diligently inquiring to know where is that king, King Herod, sends forth privately once again to search. And then he calls these magicians or magians who came and he tells to them, even I want to know and I want to worship him, which is a fakery of a lie, because the world doesn't love a believer. The world has been the world has not been given what the believer enjoys breath by breath. What assurance we have. Therefore, in the similar manner, Satan on this earth will never enjoy your positional sanctification and your position with Christ, what you are by faith alone in Christ alone. It hates you like anything. Like the way how Herod went along in his hypocrisy to say, inquire diligently, acribos, and come back and let me know. And he says first, secretly asking to this man, and he once again inquires secretly to know where it is. And then he takes again the word acribos in verse number 8, and he teaches to them, to the Magis, when they would come, certainly let us know where is that star, where is that sign. He trembles at the birth of the king. Now representing Herod at the same time what we read in Ezekiel chapter 29 verses 3. The king of Egypt representing Satan where it comes along to teach in the terms that water belongs to me. 
and we found that we are here to put hooks into the jaws and to defend, to teach by unsheathing our swords, being trained day by day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and making our lives sanctified in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and separating our lives to require to prove the wondrous work are the great wonderful work through our lives that could be made available to these people to understand that we are the children of the Most High, our Lord, our God. So we are though the alien areas, our Lord, our God has something far greater designed to confound or to pull down the thinking of Satan. So Herod trembles at the birth of my Christ the entire angelic host gives a great vision of the angelic realm to honor the Lord of a God, to say glory to the Lord of a God to the highest and peace be to be the mankind on this earth because they knew the King of Kings has been born who is the King of glory. The same thing what he continues in Isaiah 48 to say, I have called you in righteousness and I will make the wilderness a place of living water. The people of all the lands will come and praise and give me that glory which is due unto me. That's the church age believers. And yet, the king of glory, though he's been born, who has done his work and laid down for us the pattern to walk in his footsteps, where he teaches for us very specifically in each and every mannerism and in each and every trial, so that we could be available for the glory of the Lord of our God when we are coming with Christ to be found a people for praise and honor and worthy enough and how you can sustain that which could be for a great suffering on this earth to continue it with it the thing that could continue with it is purely the persistence of Bible doctrine their brethren, the leaky brains which they go for empiricism and rationalism and they end up to teach in their own experience are not worthy enough. We the church age believers have something far greater wherewith Bible doctrine gives an assurance for us to say though the youth and the young may fail but those who trust the Lord of a God will renew their strength like eagle. And how sadly the people think in their mental imaginations to think. You know what is the major problem over here in the church age? The people, if they don't have sickness, if they have to learn about the symptoms of that sickness, they think they are having that sickness. That's how they have been weakened. Thus the word says in Zechariah chapter 12 verse 8, the one who is least will be like King David. And in the church age it has been said by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath, to make known your moderation to this people. Since the Lord of our God is near, you have been given to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. And if you would weak, you would say, let the weak say that I am strong. Because we have now, not a mind of fear of 2 Timothy 1.7, but we have a mind of a sound Bible doctrine. That which is able to discern what is right and what is wrong. Like Goliath, every breath in your life you will be having many problems. But the man who has been prepared in doctrine came along with a slingshot. But the men who were having though their armors or armors on them, they couldn't take an inch to burge for 40 days to come on and meet Goliath in the battle. For 40 days. The same thing, dear brethren, Every believer, if they are not walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, who haven't understood that they have a growth from milk to bread, from bread to meat by the age of 40. 
those 40 days are the time of preparation which will not come instantly which has to come when our Lord of our God trains you up through the bona fide pastor teacher training your parents that is what a male spiritual bona fide gifted pastor teacher training your parents your parents have been thoroughly prepared for your kids it's not just that we have our libido it's not just that we are having something of a physical urge so that we can end up in sex no it's not a legalized sex you have to be something of an aware when you're getting to a marriage your husband should have read the bible seven times your wife should have read the bible seven times that's the first qualification in it and afterwards you have passed down the milk stage you are having something to thoroughly comprehend in your mind the stage of great doctrine wherewith you can learn sliving the beer the filth of the translations and then sliving the lion wherewith you have been called from the Hebrew Greek and Aramic interlinear in transliterations to cross check and while you are having much of the time when you can go through you will have certainly a great limit of labor to understand when you sleeve out these both things if ever you want to have to realize that the circumcision could be kept in this church age as well then you circumcise to realize and to understand that you have been pure from the filth of these translations as a mark as a sign in my country india the mamadinians will love to have the circumcision the jews follow that circumcision but for a church age believer, it should be far greater for them if ever they think they want to have a circumcision in their life. Let them sleeve the Bible the first time in the terms pertaining to the beer and the second time in the lion when they have completed writing the entire Hebrew Greek and Aramaic interlinear. I know it's a tough task, it's a momentum task, but we have the knees of iron, what we read. And if you're not able to kneel down and write, sit and write. But we love to go with the fellowship of Daniel where with he said three times a day he is kneeling and praying to the Lord. And we have read the reference of Psalms 95.6 in comparison to he knelt thrice a day. And if it is 95.6 what the TSK could call but we have something greater in TRB which says 95.7. If he is our Lord, our God, and if we are his people, and we are the people of his pasture, then certainly he demands for us kneeling down. And that's the cause we found in Daniel chapter 2, the knees which have been made out of iron. So when you are finished living down the lion, when you go back to write again from the milk, you have pumped to bread at the stage of your bread. If ever you want to leave behind uh, things pertaining to this world, circumcise. So that you can understand what is the pain, so that you could be always available to think. We are no longer putting our feet in the filth of these translations. We want everything to be exegomai from the original language of the scriptures of Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic and go to teach and reigning in teaching the word of the Lord of our God breath by breath. What else we can teach lies if you're not going through the things pertaining to original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic? Will you be satisfied by teaching lies? Can you become from men Adama 120 to the terms pertaining to Ish of 376? The Gabriel was a man in his full maleness. That's why he trains us up every day to become the character of Christ on this earth. So that every word what we speak could be available only to the work of the Lord of our God, breath by breath. Being trained thoroughly. Those 40 days when Goliath was been challenging them, they couldn't come and face because they don't have doctrine in them. While we are in the pilgrimage trip being kept alive in a certain period of time wherewith he is causing us to test. And we do not know when is the death or the rapture of our lives. He wants us to face boldly these Goliaths. So then after sliving down the beer, the sliving down the lion, you can tell, yes, I am ready to slive the Goliath. Because now you start to write seven times, kneeling down in the presence of the Lord of our God, Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, the New Testament and the Old Testament. And every strong code, if you haven't been properly known, the original languages as in my case. But the strong code will divert you to look the difference between the same translations, what you could find. And you go there and you dig that word and you teach. You know, that's what a privilege it is for a pastor teacher.
you are not able to get along. How the men on this earth are wasting time. They are wasting their time to please the world. They think let's go weekly ones to the church. And some of the morons will love to teach. Come and perform and look upon our miracles, our healings, our tongues. And they have all the reasons to tell. Because you know Bible could be interpreted in their own thoughts. But the divine mentor, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, without him we cannot even open up our mouth. The interpretation of the inspiration of the scriptures, the author of it, is something which is far greater and far superior. Which the mind of man can never conceive about it. No heart can perceive about it. And if you are not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, take it granted, even the things pertaining to Ephesians 1, 17 through 19 is not been fulfilled in your lives. The enlightenment of your spiritual eyes. Not just to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but to march in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Not just to know the wisdom of your enlightenment, but to know what is of a great calling in the church age, to realize and to wake up and to teach us, which demands in our life to realize the apocalypti epinosis, the revolution of the full knowledge. And that is the right bona fide duty of the pastor teacher to train you up. And that's why our Lord of our God gives you trials in your life. So that are you being sure and prepared in the faith of the doctrine which has been taught for you by your bona fide gifted pastor teacher? Or are you easily run for your temporary elevation of your sufferings to go and to go and meet the miracles meeting, the healings meeting? I don't deny there are no miracles or healings. The sovereign will of the Lord of our God it is going to work according to His will. But we have something far greater, which I'm talking about the biblical healings and the biblical miracles, not anti-biblical. The right healing for you is to be taken care of your leaky brains by the word of the Lord of our God. Those leaky brains which go to experiment like the way how Solomon went along in the book of Ecclesiastes, trying all mannerism of trials in his life finding pleasure over here, thinking he will construct the homes, thinking he will have kids, thinking he will have wives, thinking he will have money. But before Bible doctrine, nothing can stand. The things pertaining to his pleasure, you forgot the path which his father taught him. The path where David went three times a day to read the word of the Lord of God, to meditate upon it. The result of that when he constructed those Psalms in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, till date. Train us up to understand how the righteousness and the goodness of the Lord of our God will continually pursue us. That's what we read in Psalms 23, 6. When they have been readily available to pursue us, His great goodness and loving kindness in our life then what it is that we are not able to enjoy them because you are being not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit you are not aware to look upon these things and since you are not in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit you are failing in your tests failing in your sufferings that's why dear brethren the great thing which our Lord of God has designed for us in eternity past he says to us the process that is carrying on now while we are alive on this earth. We have only those trials and sufferings while we are alive on this earth. And during in all of those things are we like Lazarus who waited upon the Lord of our God. And Lazarus was being taken to the heaven while the rich man was being taken to the hell. In the same process of Shohel what we call the difference between the Tartarus Gehenna and the great gulf what they have till Christ our Lord our God 
could take them back out from the paradise. They couldn't be released from paradise, letting the captivity captive and giving them the great word. And that's what, dear brethren, the trials that we go through on this earth, for example, like the Lazarus, the great one will be like Job. Even the great one will be like Paul. Above all, the greatest one will be like Christ of a Lord of a God. In everything showing us a pattern. In every realm of the calling, how many great servants of the Lord of a God. To be more specific, the servants of Yahweh, El Elyon, Elohim came along to prove their fidelity. The great one will be Ezekiel because for more than 390 plus 40 days, sleeping on the left and then on the right. Do you know how it is impossible? If we could ask today for the pastor teachers who could qualify who have this bonafide gift, that they should kneel down and read the Bible, they should kneel down and write the Bible, they should go back and cross check every word of the Bible, and then they're qualified to open up their mouth to preach the word of the Lord of a God, then certainly very few men will be qualified. Very few. Because they say, first of all, I haven't read the Bible kneeling down. Far less they would write the Bible sleeping the beer. Far less they would go to sleep like a lion. Far less they would go to sleep 22 times in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Tougher than this work Ezekiel did. To qualify for the calling of the Lord of God to become his mouth. And that's why, dear brethren, even when you have been appointed with this bona fide gift, our Lord of our God will test you. Are you faithful enough to carry His cross? Are you faithful enough to carry His burden? When we go from grace to grace, glory to glory, passing the examination, it is not that what we labor. It is what the grace of the Lord of our God labors in us abundantly to do His will. We love to learn the experience of that exertion, what we go through. It's not the labor of your exertion that you come, but the experience of that exertion, realizing very word. Why I ask you to kneel down and read the Bible, do you know? Because while you make up a word to the Lord of a God, saying to the point, today I have to read at least some chapters. If you're sitting or if you're thinking to read, by sleeping some people do, because we have found some videos in the YouTube where the pastor has kept his Bible before his leg and he has taken a drunkard bottle in his hand and we have to note the way how they think they're paying reverence and they say this Bible has given him such kind of a great thing yet he has placed it before the feet like that there are many people so whenever you are standing whenever you are sitting to read you will not find that that pain and the and the and the pleasure or the pressure what you find do you know why because you may say okay so many chapters from one to five are there i will read only two the remaining three i will read later on and you may go because you get a phone call you do you do this you do that but when you isolate yourself from the presence of the people where you are and go back to the field where our lord of god will drive you kneeling erect in his presence 90 degrees the woe that you make to the Lord of a God, that's what we have to read. The Irish preacher, which he absolutely trained, H. Ironside, one of the great pastor teacher, or to be told, one of the great authors. When he was teaching to him, he said, From where did you find these things? And the Irish preacher replied, in the open field where I go every day to open the Bible and the one who has written the Bible will come and train me up. Over several weeks of time when you are also going down upon your knees in the presence of that great Lord of our God, He will also give you. But no education under this sun can train you up the way how when you kneel down in His presence and learn Bible doctrine to teach the Word. No education. The thoughts of man being so vague and vain. They think, come to our theological college, you'll be qualified in this term. You're great in this term. No. Neology is the only qualification for the pastor teacher to read the Bible, to make that commitment to the Lord of a God. No replacement for it. 
if we are his pasture people for which he has called to feed the flock. And H. Aaron said, a great man, learning that principle from that Irish preacher, went along to continue that. The same things what we read today in the lives of the so-called pastor teachers, why they don't read the Bible, far less they can write the Bible, far less they can write the Bible the second time in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic of the interlinear, and why they're not able to do these things, do you know? The thing is, Satan prospers them gives them that name and fame because a blind who doesn't know the word of the Lord our God as we have read in first Kings and second Kings which they thought making with their own hands of gods which they thought they can make with their own hands a priest the Mika I think and they thought you be our God you be our priest and you train us up Likewise, these blind people, when they could find this man showing forth their miraculous powers, the power of the Holy Spirit, they call. The work of miracles, the work of healings, and saying to them, come and buy with me the oil, come and buy with me the kerchief. And you can find it out, the good one, you can find it out, the best one. And since these blind people do not know what it is, they believe such pastors and both of them will end up in ditch at the cost of this great and true unique spiritual life ever given for us. This church age demands sanctification of his great position given for us not to be like slaves to this world but to be slaves to the righteousness of Christ, the bond slaves of Lord's glory. And not to be slaves to emotions, but rather make your emotions your slaves and learn Bible doctrine. So while you are kneeling down in the presence of the Lord our God, you know very well what is the pressure that is upon, happening upon your knees. So the commitment what you have made with the Lord our God that you will read five chapters, you will rush up to read and to know something. Because your pastors will not teach to you that which has been erased out to be almost all word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept. If your pastors are teaching to you yet word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, then those pastors will come to train you up morning one hour, evening one hour, day by day. And if a pastor doesn't know to train you up day by day, morning one hour, evening one hour, then he has come only for his potty belly. And since he doesn't know what is the burden of that day-by-day -day teaching, he would erase the scriptures. He would say, today I have preferred to teach about this doctrine in the church. Our Sunday has one, has one hour. In fact, indeed, the churches are so much worst, so much dull of hearing the word of the Lord of God, do you know? If it is for more than 17 minutes, they want to code some psychological process. The human mind cannot understand more than 17 or 28 minutes. That's the lonely grasping power. But we are dealing with the spiritual content. We are not dealing with the human content. It is the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit of spiritual IQ. If it is less than one hour, you should be thinking, is it so early the one hour has gone? But in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, though we teach to you for more than one to two hours, you would feel that it was only a time of 10 or 20 minutes. And that one hour to two hours, what we train you up, will be for you all to understand that in Christ, we have to know minimum one hour of doctrine and Christ our Lord our God says in the Mount of Transfiguration to teach them, couldn't you wait for me for one hour? And Daniel was astonished for one hour when the dream was not been taken to interpretation. These things, why they have been recorded and kept. And the tithe of your time, two hours, 24 minutes or two hours, 40 minutes, morning, one hour, evening, one hour. Why? Not that we should get a great name of fame in the presence of the Lord of our God, but rather in return to give credibility to your account. 
when the Lord of God is appearing so that your faith could be found in great praise and honor and glory to Him. So that you can stop grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We don't deserve any gifts either in the presence of the Lord of our God. Do you know why? If we could make an end for you to stop grieving and squelching and lying by the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit who indwells in you, but rather in return be filled with the Spirit, walking in the Spirit and making your life to march in the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that's enough. That's a lifetime of a task for us. Whenever you go back and look and see your own life, how much of your time you are spiritual, how much of your time you are soulish or pneumaticas or not pneumaticas but sukikas. How much of your time you are flesh sarkikas. Go back and look and dig and see. Yet we say we are fight we are able to fight the Lord's battle without having the divine presence of the Lord of our God in our lives. Having your bad consciousness and you think you can have great faith in the word of the Lord of our God, doesn't you judge yourself in your sunerises or the things pertaining to the faculty of your soul which could constantly give you the basic morality which is right and which is wrong? That's what we read in Hebrews 10.22. The basic difference between what is right and what is wrong, sunerises. At least in my country, India, the unbelievers are far more superior in their consciousness to obey and to agree. They're really great as comparison to these believers who come up with the hypocritical masks. And we know very well they don't believe the doctrine what we teach. The seven to seven code. Seven times kneeling down and reading the Bible prior to get that they think they can get to their marriage life. But why the pastor gives them, do you know? He calls them as a couple and he says, at least those both should be in my church. And that is the first point, so that if they both are working, they could get that money to the church as tight. And second, he says, the baptism you need for your marriage ticket. Third, if he is a licensed pastor, he wants to get some money for the marriage that he's going to perform. But never they will ask, what is your great commitment to the Lord? Have you read at least once the Bible? At least once. Far less they could be ready with their libertos to get married. They don't even ask them once, have you read the Bible? Have you put your foundation of your knees upon the word of the Lord of our God and read the Bible? No, you not, we are serving that great Lord of our God who was so great in the time wherewith with his servants he was being honored and glorified. And Daniel chapter 9 teaches to us the way how they rebelled, rebelled, rebelled and yet Lord of our God being merciful towards us, he comes with grace. What a great chapter it will be for us when we enlighten and expose the word of Daniel chapter 9. Making out one one words and taking it takes more than one hour for us. Then how much more it should be for us to understand. Live apart about the eschatology, what will have been designed for the things pertaining to the Jews because when they want to look Daniel chapter 7, they have something great and there are some worms to be called who think eschatological experts rather leaving their personal sanctification and the fellowship with the Lord of a God in the church age for which they have been kept to suffer as a Christian first Peter 4 16 they want to look the future events I don't deny the eschatological events are not needed but they are needed but first let's prepare our ground for the appearance of the Lord of a God because Lord is near that's what how curious agas because we do not know when is our death neither we do not know when is the rapture of this church First, you be prepared. Be prepared to cleanse your thinking that has been filled with the garbage in your soul. Be prepared not to grieve, not to squelch, and not to deceive the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Be prepared to meet the Lord of our God. And are you prepared to meet our Lord of our God with great pleasure? To say that, Lord, we have done that which is our duty to be done. And yet our Lord of our God comes with grace day by day.
He will not cast us off forever, says Lamentations 331. In Isaiah, he says, At my hands are outstretched still. But the greater you don't tear your veil of your flesh to live this new, true, living life in the church age, the life of kinekitesis, the greater these trails which our Lord our God uses in your life to train you up so that to be free from your misery and to come to the great joyfulness in Christ. You count yourselves in the terms of lies. Because you have been fed with lies. You have been trained in lies. Go back and cross check and look the church, whether it's in the terms of the foundation of the original language of the scriptures. That's your life. If they're not teaching to you from the original language of the scriptures, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, with the proper dispensing technique of dispensations, exposing the word in the terms of isagogic categories and exegesis, then quit that church. Says Romans 16, 17. Where they don't follow the rule, which has been established by the grace of the Lord of God through Apostle Paul, to delineate for us about this mystery doctrine. The great man who has many things for us to teach, yet what seemed fit for us, by the grace of the Lord our God has recorded and kept for us, teaching to preach the word Kerusathon Lagan, fulfilling Colossians 4, 2 through 6, the mystery doctrine of the church is what we need to preach. For which cause I am in chains, said the Apostle Paul. But today, ministers, if ever they want to pray, they want to ask, Make it a grand success by giving us more money that we beg. Make it a grand success by saying that we have no climatic issues or weather conditions to be in control. But Apostle Paul prays in Colossians 4 to teach to them, pray for me for one cause, to expound this mystery doctrine of the church age. And in today's pulpits, we don't find to preach the word of the Lord of God in proper exposition of his great boldness, says John 16, 25. Yet these trials come up in their life. They aren't even worried what is this bona fide gift which our Lord of God has given for us in the church age. The process which our Lord of God carries right now if needed to be put in the furnace to bring out the preciousness of the faith. He bought that same great preciousness of faith in Meshach, Shadrach, Abagnado. He bought to prove that innocency through Daniel when he put in the lion's den. Oh, we may have much great Daniels in the church age. We may have much great fellowship like the way of Meshach, Shadrach, Abagnado in the church age. The fire on earth, if it could be seven times far greater or seventy-seven times far greater, ready to die to the presence of the Lord our God, if it is Lord's will, he will deliver us. If it is not, let it be so, said they. So are we to say if we are being provided to walk breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, glorifying that true Lord our God for which cause we have been kept alive on this earth. And we have been given far greater privileges than what they enjoyed. They did not have the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what you and I enjoy at every breath of our calling in Christ. Every breath we have been demanded to be moment by moment in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. In simple terms, if ever you are alive, you should be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If not, your life is dead. What we have on this earth to enjoy by being not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. What does this earth count all about? At the cost of grieving and squelching and lying to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what we can grave ourselves to our flesh, or what we can cater to our needs of the flesh, 
at the cost of grieving and squelching and lying. You may say, no, I am a morally good person. I'm not grieving or squelching or deceiving. But remember, if you don't carry up your cross every day and come to the church to learn Bible doctrine, that's where you started to begin to grieve and squelch. If you don't wake up and to give number one priority for Bible doctrine, morning by morning, the first thing after you get up from your bed, kneel down there and there itself and ask the Lord of God to guide you. Those precious moments in the presence of the Lord of our God make up your relationship with Christ. Not that you may think we will have after our things pertaining to the works what we have on this earth and then we come back evening time or time and we give to the Lord. No. Put first thing first. It is not that you do the works of night in the day. But you do the works of night in the night. Therefore Lord of our God says while it is night we cannot. On the daytime, what is our work? We have to do it. First priority, before the voice of these birds or the creatures could go to the Lord, the first voice should be yours to go to the Lord. And yet, what do we find? We don't find ourselves to give number one priority for doctrine. And have you say, are you not grieving, my Lord? Are you not squelching, my Lord? And the world should hate us. By that I mean the Christendom pastor teachers who are running their shows by becoming the Kleptes, Lestes, Misthotes, Tupas, Canapes, Tiflos and Sharuras because the truth, what has been found in the Bible being expounded. They will hate us, but we don't care. Who cares them? Seldom we even care the president of the country wherewith he has all the powers. About then that president, the prince of the power of this air, wherewith it loves to make all mannerism of gimmicks the way how it has done in Job's life, who cares? We have been said in the church age to trample Satan under our feet because we have been given authority over the overall dunamis power of Satan, not only just to trample the scorpions and serpents. And when we have such a great power of the Lord our God, who cares whether the false pastor teachers hate us? Or who cares it may be even the president of the country to hate us or prime minister of this country to hate us? Who cares even the prince of the power of this air thinks to hurdle our life in every mannerism of troubles it could rise in the sufferings? But through faith we walk having our obedience dependent constantly upon His Word in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that no matter what the world could think even to conceive or imagine the thoughts, it could be in that manner, it could be in this manner, but we find everything in the Bible. When you have experienced the Bible and the examples of the Bible, what we can worry about this world at the current situation, what they get along. We are not worried about it, neither we will be worried about it. We have Christ our Lord our God, that's enough. We have here on this earth to exemplify Christ our Lord our God for each work that He has given to us through Father in heaven. And only through His word in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that's enough. If Lord our God could carry such kind of a great burden for you and for me on the cross and has paid a little suffering for us on this earth and that he demands that when we come out it should be like a glorious honor to the Lord our God, then why we worry? The only problem for you to worry is that you don't love my Lord. The only problem for you to worry is that you don't have that word to sustain. Why the only problem for you is purely because you haven't realized what is the glory of the Lord our God. You haven't feared. The fear that you train up to your children is lies. The fear that you have towards my Christ is lies. It's an hypocritical one. If you truly fear and obey the Lord my God, if you are a believer, take up your cross and follow Christ. If you are a pastor, teacher, take up and teach every day Bible doctrine, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, with the right dispensing technique of dispensations, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, again to repeat. If you truly obey and have the true fear of the Lord my God. And for what you all are surviving on this earth. We know very well for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. At the cost of honoring my Lord. 
You make the name of my Lord to be blasphemed among these Gentile nations. Rather than making the name of my Lord to be dreadful among these Gentile nations. Remember Revelation chapter 11 verse 17 we find. All nations both great and small. All languages shall come to burden because the corruption that has been begun our Lord our God is going to end it up by putting a great corruption to say with the things pertaining to the teachings of Satan to be erased out no matter however great it may be however good it may seem the corruption what it has been begun the corruption what is going to put and that time by and that and by that we mean <coughs> excuse me the corruption where it could nothing be the wrath of the Lord of a God to destroy the corruption which has been developed in the midst of this people and therefore he says you Ethiopians you shall be slain by the sword of the Lord of a God and every word of the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher is slaining whether you hear or forbear, we are not here to convince you, though she may be my own wife, or though they may be my own blood. Lord our God came over here on this earth to put differentiation between the word he says, you think I came here to give peace? I came here to put fire. And if you don't have that fire in the Lord, you're not worthy to think of it. We shall have a word of prayer and look the conclusion part of suffering. Infinitely divine Holy Father, as we negotiate these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and not in challenges by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. Amen. So though it may be a furnace to bring out the preciousness of the faith, so it is not a question of being cleansed, but He does cause us to pass through all that which He sees needful for our discipline. That's why to fall in the hands of the Lord of our God is a great blessing, said David, rather than choosing the other two options for which he has counted the Israel army. Because he knew very well it is a gracious Lord of our God. Rather than making our life still dependent upon the lustful patterns of the old sin nature for our discipline to be in return, it will be better for us to fall in the hands of the Lord of our God through rebound by sanctifying ourselves and not grieving and squelching, neither deceiving the indwelling entering ministry of Lord God. The Holy Spirit deceiving is so specific in Acts chapter 5, which has been illustrated between Ananias and Sapphira. If they have sold for one million dollars, they bought only half of that. Likewise, we have a great work with Christ on this earth in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, where he has designed for us in John chapter 17 that the work that has been given to destroy the works of this evil, we have to perform it provided we are faithfully prepared to make our meat as Lord's will, John 4.34, in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, John 4.24. So we have something far greater and we are not giving ourselves the full perfection of fidelity. Therefore, we are deceiving the Holy Spirit of God because we constantly grieve, we constantly squelch. And we aren't having the true fear of the Lord our God. If not, we would tremble ourselves and follow to carry our cross every day for which you are called to be in the church age. If you are a true bona fide gifted pastor teacher, you will tremble at the Lord's word and you will kneel to look upon the presence of the Lord our God because He is our Lord, He is our pasture. Then certainly what you do, you come to train up to teach every believer perfect and complete. Colossians 1, 23-29 To make every believer perfect and complete because the Spirit of the Lord our God says 2 Corinthians 3, 6 quickeneth us. The transformation of quickening it will not keep you still dead, but it quickeneth up. And you know what a great privilege it is for us to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, not to grieve, not to squelch, and not to deceive, but to be available for the work of the Lord of our God to do greater works. Not only just to keep His commandments, but to keep His words. That's what we read an example. A mother goes out saying to the daughter not to do such and such things, and the mother has a word to say to the daughter, when I come back, I have to do such and such works. 
The daughter first keeps the commandments, not doing which her mother said not to do the commandments, to go out or do this or do that. She was obedient for keeping the commandments and the desire of the mother to come back and do the work. When she does that, when the mother returns home, she says, you have not only kept my commandments, but have kept my word. That's an illustration for us. We are not here not to grieve and squelch, but rather to do the will of Lord God the Father. That's the keeping His word. Therefore, they come in us and then we become one to be into the Trinity. Remember, the Trinity of the Lord of our God, that whose dwelling is not in flesh, loves to reside in your flesh. Therefore, He's been calling you to be holy and blameless in your soul, spirit and body. The Holocleros of James 1.4, the First Thessalonians 5.23, to be pure in your soul, spirit and body, referring to Ephesians 5.8 and 9, teaching to us the fruit of the Spirit, which is Agathe Sune, Dikaya Sune and Alatia, the Alatia which has been needed for you, the true genuine, true standards of a true heart for your spirit, which has been born again. And for your soul, always nothing but Dikaya Sune, the righteousness of the Lord, and for your flesh, Agathe Sune, the divine goodness. Remember that great trinity making an abode in us. And when that great trinity abodes in us, who are we to lie? Who are we to grieve? Who are we to squelch? Who are we to prove that we are baseless and worthless? Who are we to say, oh, this is not a witness to the Lord? And before the presence of that great elect angels, where they look and observe every time, says 1 Corinthians 4, in comparison to Luke 15, the great illustration, what we can find. And in fact, indeed, in 1 Peter 1, the angels rubbernecking to look what they've been taught in the pulpits. And there they will count. This is a baseless person. He doesn't even have the fear of the Lord of our God to see that their body is the temple of the living God. They have been bought with a great price. Therefore, they have to glorify the Lord of our God in their flesh, being allowed to look and to perform and carry the work of Christ, being designed for them in eternity past, besides conforming to the image of His dear beloved Son, and to glorify the Lord of our God, for which cause He says that He is our Lord and He is our pasture. We forget all those things. Because we say we are like the ordinary believers on this earth. And I'm talking about the religion believers, that are those unbelievers. And we are not even superior for those unbelievers in the standards. In my country, India, just pass by a road under a tree, keep a stone. After one year, you will find a great temple being constructed for them, saying that this is God. And though the word of the Lord of God says, Now you are the temple of the living Lord of our God, in you he indwells. Yet we go for drunkenness, yet we go for debauchery, yet we go for adultery, yet we make any things that could be against the will of Lord God the Father, so that you shall not destroy this flesh. Ending up schizophrenic in every mannerism of the thoughts. And for such leaky brains, Whenever the sufferings will come, when they don't heed warning discipline, Lord our God takes them to intensified stage of discipline. And even at that time, if they don't believe the discipline given to them, then certainly they will die sin unto death. And for such sin we are not able to pray, says 1 John 5.16. But the one who has been born of the Lord our God, the word says they will not sin. Therefore, help us to count the later days of our life, the time that has been given for us on this earth. In Deuteronomy, he says, Oh, I wish they would know their last days, the end days, not about eschatology, but their life. When we are grown up, we don't use the things pertaining to kids. We talk about the things pertaining to a grown-up child. And yet we'd love to teach to you in the pulpits, what we find in our churches, what they teach, milk. They're not even able to make the sincere milk to be drunk. Of 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2. Every mannerism of uncleanliness in their thinking, every mannerism. And how they would pass through this furnace of the test. So Lord of God, He needs discipline to them who are not walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. 
He uses the things that are in the world, which is nothing but the evil, the cacas of the fornias, the mischief of all sin. And he uses the sinharmatia, the ill will of others, so that you could wake up by giving them to say, it is between me and the Lord. Let Lord take and have vengeance upon them. And always being alert to look what the Bible says, whether it's the word of the Lord of God, to grave, then be far away from it, thousand miles. Touch not, taste not, handle not, says the scripture. So all the things that are in the world he uses simply as an instrument to break down and exercise our heart. So that our obedience may be simple and that our faith may be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of my Christ, says Colossians 1.22, to be holy, blameless and agnacate us in his presence. So dear brethren, to give an example, we do not think much of an uncomfortable inn if I know that I am only there for two or three days on the way. So we might perhaps wish it were better, but we are not troubled much about it because we are not living there. Likewise, we are not living in this world, we are dying here. Therefore, dear brethren, to live in this world and make up your life thinking you have much pleasure to make up on this earth and at the cost of grieving and squelching and deceiving the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it's not worth. Therefore, stop grieving, stop squelching. You have been bought with a great price. Glorify the Lord our God in your flesh. Our pilgrimage trip is heavenly. We have to go back to the home where our Lord our God has designed us to his praise. And while we are on this earth, manifest at every breath we go through the glorious glory of the Lord our God to the praise of his work. And as many people don't understand about these things, yet they don't even realize the greatest prayer prayed for us that we are the people that we have kept his word. Though they realize it or not, our bona fide duty is to teach it day by day. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you realize it's left to you. Life is too short. The responsibility laid down upon our shoulders is too large. Do not just wish the grace of the Lord of our God in vain, but when the sufferings comes to you, committing everything into the hands of the Lord of our God who is able to deliver you from every form of mannerism of temptation, and is not going to get into your mind if you don't know what is the doctrine for you to produce over there. There are many more things for us in the Bible. There are much blessedness wherewith many people don't understand about these things. What a blessed attitude and what a blessed doctrine we have. There are unfathomable depths of blessedness which the Lord of our God has laid before us in his scripture. And if you know them, the details of this life are nothing. And if you can master them, the joy and the peace which our Lord of our God has designed for us to garrison our hearts with his word is far more superior than to think upon Satan or the works of Satan or the agents of Satan. Because we have to seek and learn more and more to know, to be abiding with the Father, to be abiding in his Son forever to be realized. Therefore, dear brethren, the indwelling trinity makes us perfect. The indwelling trinity calls us to keep his words besides keeping his commandments. And that's why, dear brethren, we have still yet unfathomable depths of blessedness through his word and the details of them could master our life on this earth wherewith no matter however Satan could come to tempt us, we have the fortification in Christ and Satan knows very well it cannot even touch us. But in return, we are trampling Satan at every breath of our life by slaving the beer, by slaving the leon, and by going to slave the Kaliath. Think about these issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly, in the privacy of your soul, that you tell to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest part is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest merit is to carry Satan Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season, because of the Dharma Trima witnesses where we have been called. The number one Dharma Trima witnesses in well in Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two Dharma Trima witnesses 
our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord our God, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you think over it. But we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to understand thy word and thy calling, wherewith you have called us in thy righteousness to honor thy glory. So, Father, you are the King of glory, and there is none other else. Help us, O Lord, to make you on this earth to honor thy word above thy name, and to realize in the minds of these people to stop grieving and squelching and deceiving the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and to make, to be preparing a people being turned unto the holiness of the Lord of God for thy battle in this angelic conflict. So, Father, as we have studied these things, we pray, Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten and challenge us by this message, so that, Sovereign Lord, thou alone might be glorified. In Christ's matchless, endless, peerless grace, we pray, Sovereign Lord, may Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten in these terms. Amen.